if we look at, I mean, in order to appreciate what has been allocated in defense, there is another way of looking at it. If we take a look at defense exhibition that was held in Lucknow. The more remarkable thing about the defense exhibition was the fact that uh, a, we have projected ourselves as one of the emerging military defense exporters uh, in the world. Uh, we have announced and there are grandiose plans. Uh, but if you look carefully at some of the things that have been talked about, Raghu, it leaves you feeling very unsettled. For instance, the prime minister, the defense minister, everybody spoke eloquently about how our defense exports increased from rupees 2 to 3, 2,000 crores uh, to 10,700 crores. And in fact, if I remember correctly, the prime minister used the figure 17,000 crores, which was highly exaggerated. I think he mistook the zero. He removed the zero and just read the 17 uh, as 17,000 crores. Anyway, the reality is, if you look closely, that most of that amount that they're talking about, I mean, 2,000 crores is actually military exports. The rest is civilian aerospace parts and components which were exported. Okay. Okay. So we come back to an issue that you have touched upon earlier. But I find that it's still relevant to talk about it because it deals with offset. Yes. And the way in which offsets have actually yes. been hollowed out. Absolutely. So Raghu, one, the question is, how do you make civil aerospo aerospace components exports part of military exports. It's not, it's not correct at yeah. all. It's just not right. It starts because the offsets of defense contracts, hmm. uh, because the numbers are small and the foreign equipment manufacturer finds it difficult to incorporate transfer of technology or sub-assemblies mm -hmm. manufacturing in India for a small number of aircraft. Therefore, it says, okay, I will get some civilian components made. Like that's all did to, with right, Falcon or, or uh, like executive Boeing, jet. Or like Boeing does with uh, yeah. uh, anything else. So they deliberately, in order to satisfy the offset requirements, get some civilian parts made. Okay, that's a kind of a twisting of the offset uh, rules. Although it should be done only in exceptional cases, we are now routinizing this uh, process, which I think shouldn't be done. because This is not what offset was all about. Exactly. The purpose of offset was that it enables you to indigenize the production of the technology which you are buying outright today. But all that works only if your purchases are of scale and you have identified strategically defined partnerships which can then absorb that technology and do it. So by compulsion, offsets are being diverted for various other uses. But then to further distort that by claiming in exports that these are military exports is I think fraudulent. Uh, mm. But I think the second notable fact in the DEF Expo that you were talking about is bulk of the equipment displayed there which you India is showcasing uh, to the world are made by public defense sector undertakings, PDSUs. Mm. This whole um, narrative that is now being yeah. done of promoting the Indian private sector, mm. I think the hollowness of that narrative was exposed in DefExpo by the fact that all the major weapons platforms that you are displaying and demonstrating there are done by the uh, public sector undertaking. Except the media report of that would tend to p project the private uh, uh, private corporations entry into defense as a major feat. As a, it's not a major feat because bulk of these are related to missile technologies where Israeli companies or something are doing assemblies here. It's not really manufacture. It's assemblies here for export. Exactly. And for Israel, it makes sense because Israel, after all, although it is technologically very strong, uh, it's a small country. So it's difficult to expand their manufacturing base very much. So they don't mind uh, expanding manufacturing base into India and re-exporting from here. But the interesting thing about uh, uh, the private corporations is there are a number of agreements, joint ventures that have been signed for small arms yeah. and for drones. A number of private corporations are entering this field. Yeah. That is one part of the problem because we are going to soon have a, a glut. Yeah. 
uh, and not enough buyers domestically yeah. and will be faced with. Now, this issue is confronting Larson and Tubro, yeah. one of the largest private corporations in the defense sector. Yeah. They have warned government of India that that Vajra 9 howitzer that they have manufactured with South Korean company in a joint venture, that very soon in six months time, they're going to run out of orders. And unless government of India gives them another order, yeah. they may have to close shop and move their skilled staff somewhere else. Yeah. So that raises a question. I mean, this is going to be a recurring problem. What has happened is that the Ministry of Defense officials have been telling now the private corporations that, look, your share of the pie is going to be small. Mm -hmm. And don't count on repeat orders. You have to create, you have to look for exports. Now, my question to you, Raghu, is that if you create a private, I mean, you allow private sector to entry, their major demand is that there must be a repeat orders, otherwise the companies cannot make do. If you are asking them to export and create a market, how realistic is this it's way of creating an uh, indigenous defense sector in it's India? completely unrealistic uh, because all private, for two reasons, mm. all private companies are uh, making a beginning in domestic manufacture by collaboration with a foreign mm. OEM. Mm. So unless that foreign OEM also chooses to use India as a platform for exports, Mahindra and Mahindra by themselves cannot scale up and do it because it's not their technology yes. <laughs> in the first place. It's not their equipment to sell. So if they want to sell it, they'll have to talk to their uh, Korean counterparts uh, in order to use this, provided the Korean counterpart wants to use the manufacturing platform uh, mm -hmm. in India. This is unrealistic to begin with, just as to my mind, it was unrealistic to envisage that private Indian manufacturers can emerge as scale players in defense manufacturing in the first place. That itself was, I think, a big fallacy. This can only be done by defense public sector undertakings, by pooling mm -hmm. different uh, types of manufacture of armaments and thereby achieving scale. You've, you've got one private manufacturer manufacturing guns here and somebody else manufacturing. That's not scale enough for you to uh, enable any meaningful platform either for indigenous consumption or for export. So this is, I think, a fallacy which originates from the original fallacy which is we will expand private sector uh, defense manufacturing. It does not happen and it will not happen. My last question today is uh, Donald Trump is going to be visiting yeah. India and there are two big deals yeah. that are being talked about that India is going to sign. One is for an in that integrated uh, air defense uh, weapons sy uh, missile system. The other is for uh, Seahawk helicopters for uh, Indian Navy. Yeah. Uh, what are the implications of this? Because I remember that this integrated air defense thing was offered to India when it was clinching its deal for seven, uh, S-400 with Russia. And at that point, there were these indications that we don't require it. How, how do you see, I mean, if we see, sign the, it? The, the integrated uh, missile defense uh, system is more of a network-based uh, defense system. Uh, which the Americans and the Israelis both uh, have developed and look, look to as a mainstay of their uh, defense um, uh, structures. So if India is looking at that, well, I mean, I don't know how essential that is in the way it is being uh, put forward. Uh, but it, by nature, it is different from the S-400 uh, system, which is a one uh, anti-missile defense uh, platform, whereas an integrated missile defense system will be a more widespread and networked uh, okay. structure. So there's a difference there. So I can understand if the uh, army is interested in looking at hmm. uh, systems like that. Although whether the American one is the right one to go for is something we can think about uh, and discuss uh, later. But as we discussed once earlier on this uh, show, I have always believed that when Trump came here, the Indian government will throw him some crumbs in terms of military 
uh, purchase. Order, yeah. And if you've noticed, almost all Indian purchase of US equipment has been specialized equipment in small numbers. Apache helicopters, Chinook helicopters, heavy lift uh, choppers, Hercules one, uh, 130J, uh, the Galaxy. Mm. These are all systems being acquired in small numbers. So there's no technology transfer involved. There'll be no offsets involved. This is government to government uh, deals. Straightforward deals, cash payment, done. The choice of this Seahawk, it may look big in $2 billion. It's a small order for 24 helicopters. So frankly speaking, if you ask me, it doesn't make a big difference to the American economy to get this order. And it doesn't make a big difference to the Indian military that we have acquired these uh, helicopters. So I view this as a political purchase uh, and not a very great uh, uh, force augmentation that India has done in its Navy compared to other similar helicopters that we could have purchased. So to conclude, I mean, if you take a look at defense budget, our plans for defense export, uh, grandiose uh, an ambition, uh, you know, pro, uh, uh, projection of uh, India being emerging as a major defense exporter and all. Uh, and given the economic slowdown and everything, how would you sum up today? Uh, uh, not just the resource allocation, but much more the defense, the way in which we are orienting our defense and the way in which we seem to be moving. Three aspects I'll uh, focus on. First, I think this export mirage should be given up completely, especially export based on private sector participation, because as I said, these are all dependent on foreign manufacturers. So any export that you do also depends on your foreign partner, whether he wants to use this for export or not, uh, which is unlikely. Uh, the second aspect is I think India sh needs to focus far more on developing indigenous manufacturing and indigenous weapon system platforms, which will require investment in R&D. And in the budget discussions that you've just spoken yeah. of, the allocation for DRDO is really extremely small. With that kind of investment, you're not likely to be able to develop major weapon systems uh, platforms. Mm. The drones that you spoke about, these are smaller drone systems. Mm. If you want the larger modern drone systems that other countries have got, you need to do that investment yourself uh, in order to do it, which I don't see. Mm. If you had developed those, then I can understand you talking about export. And if you want to involve private sector, if uh, DRDO develops a drone, they would have private sector partners uh, contributing to that manufacture, uh, whether it is for domestic consumption or for uh, export. So to my mind, I think the government is getting its priorities inverted. Yeah. They should not worry about exports, nor about independent private sector uh, roles. If you give a boost to the defense public sector undertakings, which have the capability, both in research and in production, it will automatically bring in the private sector for manufacture of sub-assemblies sub and assemblies, etc., and may lead to some of them emerging as independent players on their own. If you look at Larson and Tubro, for example, they've acquired their capabilities in shipbuilding and submarines through partnership with the defense shipyards and with DRDO, and now if they're prepared to strike out on their own, it's fair enough. So that's the way to visualize expansion of the Indian defense sector and involvement of the private sector. But emphasis has to be on indigenous manufacture as well as indigenous capacity development to develop new and modern weapons platforms. Thank you, Raghu, for today. Uh, this is all for now. Uh, keep watching news, news Click, and if you have any comments or feedback, do write to us. Thank <laughs> you.